Brighten your day by watching the Time with Teresa television show. Whether in the studio or on location, Teresa Westbrook and guests will warm your heart and encourage your soul. And now, your host, Teresa Westbrook. Welcome to Time with Teresa live around the world. We're so glad that you have tuned in with us. Today, we're going to be talking all about the prayer march of 2020. And my guest today sharing the experience with us is Donna Smith. Please help me welcome Donna Smith to the program. Welcome, Donna. Oh, thank you. I'm actually really excited to, to be with you and to talk about this. It was a wonderful, wonderful event. Yes, praise God. Well, Donna, just briefly before we get into that event, share with our viewers a little bit about your career background and uh, then a little bit about how you personally came to know the Lord as your Savior. Okay, okay. Well, I, I currently work in a dental laboratory, and I have the privilege of making crane and bridge work for people who have had trouble with uh, gr good oral hygiene sometimes or accidents. <laughs> and so I'm kind of the tooth fairy. <laughs> and uh, I've done this for over 35 years and enjoy it tremendously. Um, I actually came to know the Lord when I was 11 years old. And it was one of those, it, it was a Saturday evening, and I was actually sitting in my bedroom on my bed playing with Barbies. <laughs> and for the first time, I had a moment where I knew that I was a sinner. I grew up in church. I heard all kinds of lessons and sermons, and, and I never put together that the things that I got in trouble with, with my parents or a, a, a teacher or something, was a sin. It never occurred to me that I had any sins whatsoever. But on that particular evening, I was sitting in my room playing, and all of a sudden, it started occurring to me, I need Jesus. I'd never thought it through that way that I needed Jesus. And so I sat there on my bed going, oh God, I need Jesus. I don't want to go to sleep tonight because what if I don't wake up, you know, tomorrow? So um, my dad it was a Church of Christ preacher. And so I went out into the living room and I, I told my dad, I said, dad, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. And I know it's Jesus but I'm pretty sure you need to take me down to the church so I can get baptized. And so my dad, he, he said, well, this is great news. He said, God loves you. You know, you're going to go to heaven. And, and I said, but I need to go get baptized. And he said, well, Donna, don't worry about it. Don't you know, nobody ever died on the way to the baptismal. You'll be fine till tomorrow. <laughs> and so it was just I look back on it now and it was, it was sweet. And um, I understood at that point that I did need a savior and his name was Jesus. And so he's been my King and Lord since I was 11. Well, let's go ahead and get started and talk about this wonderful event that you went to. Uh, why did you attend the prayer March 2020? Well, actually, I saw, I saw an advertisement for it on Facebook, and I, I looked into it, and the moment I did, it's like in, my heart just jumped, and I knew I needed to go. It was incredibly exciting and important, you know, at that time, and um, so I had about, I guess it was about three weeks or so in, in order to get my ticket, my airline ticket, and and make provision to go. And I did ask, um, I, I did post it on Facebook and invited anyone if they wanted to go with me, we'd go together. And so I did have a friend who agreed to go with and, and that made it nice. Um, I would have gone by myself, even if I had to, because I really felt that it was important that I needed to go. I needed to be there. So I, I did make, uh, you know, provision to get there. And uh, it, it certainly, it certainly was a blessing to go. 
Yes, I, I, I imagine so. And there are so many participating. Do you have, I know churches around the world, around the globe were participating as well, uh, right along with you. And this was headed up by Franklin Graham, is that correct? It, it was, it was Franklin Graham and his, his group. And uh, they, they truly are an amazing uh, group. They're so organized and they have volunteers uh, that just are, are, are helpful and amazing. And uh, um, at, the, at the march, uh, the, the guess was that there was about 100,000 people. Oh, wow. And it was, I've never seen a crowd that big in person. It was quite impressive. And I was thrilled because, um, you know, you never know who's going to be there or who's going to show up. But it was, it was just amazing. It started at the Lincoln Memorial. And it, that in itself, if you've not been to DC, is such an impressive uh, uh, place. When you, when you stand there and go inside, it's beautiful. And so it started there. And Franklin Graham started us off. He prayed. And uh, Mike Pence was there. And Michelle Bachman was there. And there were several others whose names are eluding me at the moment, but there were just thousands of people and, you know, everybody that was there wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made it so interesting and even awe-inspiring is everybody was excited to be there. Everybody wanted to be there. Uh, people love their nation. People love the United States and want to see God, not just manifest his presence here but to be in control we want to have a christian nation and we we want to see everybody come to know jesus because he's a good king he's so good yes and yes. uh amen amen well that's awesome and um did you feel safe while you were there tell us I, how the climate was what was the environment well it was because I'm kind of a news junkie, I wasn't sure what to, <laughs> I wasn't sure what to expect. And I felt confident that, especially since it started at 12 noon, that we should be okay. And so the, the mood was very positive. Um, there was no, at least in, in the, the massive crowd I was with, there wasn't anybody angry there wasn't anybody upset. It was, it was people that were just praying out loud, silently in groups, out loud in groups. It, it was people uh, singing hymns. It, it was such a beautiful moment and it happened several times. There was this group of people and there was probably 20 of them and they literally just walked and sang. They walked slowly and so you'd hear them kind of coming up from behind you and then they would pass around you. It was absolutely beautiful. I mean, I have visions that heaven is going to be like that. <laughs> but it was just incredible. And you would walk past a group of people and they would motion to you, come over here, come over here. And we would hold hands with them and pray. And then we'd go on and there'd be another group of people and they would be making declarations you know, um, this nation will come to know Jesus. Everyone will be saved. The glory of God will manifest its presence all across this nation. I mean, there were just declarations that were going forth. And then there was this group of ladies and they had this beautiful uh, worship music going and they had their flags. And so they were worshiping and just uh, worshiping with the flags. It was just beautiful. Every where you turned, there was another, I'll say a flavor of Christendom. Yes. Yes. Even though this was a Franklin Graham organized event, it was still interdenominational. It was Christians coming together as it should, laying labels and denominations aside and coming together and praying for our nation. That's what makes it so beautiful. Oh, and it, it's, it's so true. There, there was this older couple, and he had a really thick walking stick. And the, his wife had a, a, I'll call it a tripoded cane, 
because if you opened it up, it had a little seat where she could sit. And everywhere I went, this older couple got there ahead of me. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> but it's like, how did you get here ahead of me? But I, I watched them and she had this countenance that, oh, I try not to make myself cry. She had this countenance of, she just knew the Lord so much and Holy Spirit was just right there with her. And they would stop and she would sit down most of the time and they would hold hands and they would pray. And it was just beautiful. And then there were families that had little children and they would all stop and they would pray. And uh, we went to, uh, I guess it was the World War II Memorial where we stopped. And there were these little boys and they were laying their hands on the different states that were, you know, that are in the memorial and just praying. And these are little boys. These are like six and seven year old boys. And they're laying their hands on the monuments uh, where it's listed, yeah, the states, and they are praying and praying. And I stood there thinking, I, when I grow up, I want to be like these little children because they, they just knew, they knew their God. It was so impressive. I wanted to say something to their parents, you know, man, you guys are doing a good job, but everybody was so focused, you know, in their prayer time. I didn't want to interrupt anybody, but, uh, oh, the, those children were just, just amazing. Just amazing. That is so touching. That's wonderful. Well, do you think that this March prayer March had an impact? And if you do, what do you think was the impact? other than what you've already shared? Well, I, I'm, I'll, one of the things that I was caught off guard by, and uh, of course, Franklin Graham couldn't have known this was going to happen, but God did. Um, several days before uh, the march, which was uh, September 26th, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. And of course, we send condolences you know, to her family um, but what we didn't realize was that, that uh, President Trump would make a nomination of her replacement. And so uh, the nomination for Amy uh, Barrett was made on that same Saturday uh, in the evening. And so it, it couldn't have been a coincidence uh, that this all happened at the same time. And so I, I as we were preparing to go into DC, um, that was the part that had me just a little bit concerned because I wasn't ever concerned for my safety ever, but I had wondered if there might be some protests and different things like that because um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was quite popular. And so those that were really mourning her passing were not as happy that her replacement might be someone conservative. And so um, that was announced. I, I thought to myself, oh Lord, you knew and you wanted some intercessors in town. And so we're here to pray for our, our nation. We're here to pray for our government. It's, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but the United States has stood with Israel and we have done some amazing things. We are not perfect for sure. But as we prayed uh, at the Supreme Court later that day, uh, it was an amazing time when we were there. And uh, it, was, it was notable that decisions for justice are going to be made in this building. And we want the justice, you know, for this nation, because his justice is correct. He makes yes. always good judgments. <laughs> he always judges rightly. Yes. And he judges fairly because he sees the heart and he understands people's problems and their issues and their pasts. And he knows that he makes just decisions. And so part of what we prayed is, Lord, we, we need that in the Supreme Court justice. And, and it's 
wonderful that, that, that President Trump has been able to also put in two other Supreme Court justices, which we hope will be uh, faithful to the Constitution. And so it, there's hope for uh, Amy Barrett that that will be the same, that she'll be, her nominee will go through a godly person. And so, uh, but that was a, an amazing time to be in D.C. with that going on. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and we're sharing a few pictures along as, as you're sharing with us. And uh, I believe, um, can you see what we're looking at right now, Donna? I can. That is the Supreme Court. Okay. And that was actually not part of the march. We've okay. got, we got clock. The march had been over. But because there were so many people that showed up, we didn't even finish the march and it was supposed to be from 12 to two, um, but because of all the people <laughs> moving in the same direction. And uh, so uh, it was, and people didn't leave. They seemed to stay and continue to pray and walk to different areas. Uh, as we were walking, um, we, we walked past the Department of Justice. As, as we were uh, standing in front of the Department of Justice, there was quite the crowd that was there and they were all praying and interceding for those who investigate and those who decide uh, how the law is meted out. And so we were asking that the Lord would intervene and it would be fair that the justice would be fair in this nation, mm -hmm. that they would investigate without corruption mm -hmm. and that, you know, criminals would be dealt with, but that innocent parties would also be set free. Mm -hmm. And so, but it, it was interesting because that was not part of our, the, the march. It's just that as people walked around to pray through the, through the city, a large crowd was there. So it wasn't just on my mind in the mind of my friend who was with me it was on a lot of people's hearts praise god the lord was drawing y'all there the lord was drawing y'all to that place and mm -hmm. that is so needed what you were praying about this time more than ever so god oh, yes. was definitely ordering your steps that's beautiful oh yes and and when we were at the supreme court uh that was about the time that I thought my feet would fall off my legs. <laughs> I need somebody to carry me. <laughs> it truly was a march. You know? It was. It was. But uh, when, when, when we were there, there was a large uh, group of, of pro-life uh, women. Almost all of them were in their 20s. And it was just so precious to hear the prayers that they were praying, um, hearing their testimonies, because some of them had had, had abortions, others were, were snatched out of the fire, uh, so to speak, before they had abortions. And it was, it was just such, um, I'm gonna call it a holy moment. I don't know what else to call it. There were several, and that was one of them. Being a group of people crying out to God to forgive us of our sins for the, for spilling innocent blood, to forgive us forgive for not just participating in, in, in abortion, but making it legal. And in some, uh, well, and trying to, you know, trying to make me pay for something I'm totally against. But all I saw in that group of women was love. They love the women, even that have had abortion. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was just not what the mainstream media wants you to think. They would like you to think that these are, are stern, angry people mm -hmm. who are punishing you. And, you know, it's what I guess I don't understand where abortion is concerned is how, how is it that so many women have been convinced that their baby is their enemy. And, and that so troubles my heart is how has the enemy convinced these ladies that this little baby that's in their womb 
is their actual enemy and, and it has to be gotten rid of. And so I know there's a lot of prayer that has to be around this because it does seem that a lot of ladies are convinced of this and they see no problem <clears throat> whatsoever in basically murdering their child. And so we so many women that we know that have a testimony that have gone through this difficulty and had abortion and have carried so much guilt, so much shame, but God has come and ministered to them and taken away that guilt, taken away that shame. So we know people can be forgiven, but we know oh, yes. that is a major, a major issue in our world today that only God can take care of. You know, we can speak up and share and share biblical views with everyone and pray for everyone, but it truly is an issue like many others that we're facing today that only God can really enter in and make a difference in that. Oh, I agree. I, I think if your eyes are veiled to mm -hmm. what you're doing, and, and we can look at the, the apostle Paul when he was Rabbi Saul, he thought he was doing exactly what God would have wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. And he was totally and absolutely wrong. I mean, he, he was totally wrong, but yet God in his mercy, look how he used uh, Paul. Yeah. He wrote so much of the New Testament. I mean, he was a, he was a champion uh, for Jesus. Yeah. And so I have no doubt that God can unveil the eyes of men and women in this area, you know, of, of abortion. And I believe he will. Uh, I believe he will. And, and part of, I think, a, a lot of <clears throat> the people that, that we prayed with at the march, a lot of people are concerned about the innocent uh, blood that's been shed yeah. and how that does bring a curse on the nation. And so a lot of the prayer really was, you know, oh, God, please forgive us. People yeah. really don't know. A lot of people really don't know what they're doing. And, and we ask for more time. Give that's us more the same time. Prayer, and that's the same prayer that Jesus prayed on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. So that's he right. was asking God to forgive the very ones who were taking or felt that they were taking his life. But I want to move on to another question now because our time is getting away. Actually, we only have about five more minutes. Okay. So um, do you think prayer can really turn a nation toward God? Well, I do. I mean, uh, the scripture says it can. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and repent of their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. We have his word on this. Now, granted, the Christians are the ones who are going to have to be doing the repenting. <laughs> yes. And yes. changing from our wicked ways. Yes. And so I think a lot of us have to do a little bit of a self check and find out, are you walking after biblical principles? Have you read your Bible enough to know what those biblical principles are? And are you putting into action what you know? Yeah. And, and so I think that's, that's where we are. Uh, I think that we have a remnant of people in this nation that are sold out to God. They love him with the, every fiber of their being, and they try to, to implement what they've learned. And my dad used to say something as I was a little girl, and he would say, Donna, put in a good word for Jesus today. <laughs> and I, I thought of that over the years because I know what he meant. You know, if you have the opportunity to give a testimony of Jesus do it. If it's in, if it's in Kroger and, you know, in the vegetable aisle, do it, mm -hmm. you know, wherever it is you are, put in a good word for Jesus. And so I, I think that we have every reason to believe that because we are asking, earnestly asking God to do what he wants to do, mm -hmm. which is to have this nation to be a Christian nation that follows after him that attempts to bring uh, people into the kingdom of God. And our nation does protect Israel. 
we are someone who loves Israel and protects Israel. And I think that that's important. It and is. I think God does too. It is because the Bible says it brings a blessing. Well, I want to back up to that Second Chronicles 7, verses 13 through 14, where our viewers can actually look that up. I'm so glad you brought out that point because I, I want to bring that point out. So many of our meetings and our prayer meetings start with that Second Chronicles 7 and 14. But you don't hear too many say, if my people, and that God is talking to his people, the Christians, yes. Well, when we go back up to verse 13, he says, when he allows the, the heavens to be shut up and there's no rain, or he commands the locusts to devour the land, or sends pestilence among his people, if my people, yes. that's us, those that believe in him, called by his name, the people called by his name, Christians, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So now that's an interesting scripture, and interesting to look at that, that he was really calling the Christians out on that, not the sinners, yeah. and, um, but because, you know why? Because we are the ones who can make a difference in the world. We are the ones uh we are the ones that he will use to reach sinners to reach our world to change things in our nation so uh, i'm so glad that you brought that out uh for us so uh we have about one more minute so this is going to be a powerful question to ask for one more minute do you think christians should be aware of local and state politics and vote and if you do why Oh, absolutely. We live in a fabulous nation, and we are all given the privilege of voting, all of us. And even Jesus himself, when he was questioned about uh, giving taxes and whatnot, he looked at a coin and he says, well, give to Caesar what's Caesar's, but give to God what's God's. So you as a Christian have, have a, a, a wonderful opportunity to select people of character that will lead this nation you have an obligation, I believe, to do so. And so if you can uh, look at your local mayors, your local city council, uh, all of those people, vote for Christians, vote for people of character. Um, we, we just don't need, uh, when the scripture says, when the wicked rule, the people groan. Yes. And when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. Yes. Okay, I want to rejoice. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's 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 all go to the let's go to vote. Look into who your local races are, who the people are, and uh, you are allowed to go to the voting poll with a piece of paper with everybody's name written on it that you want to remember to vote for. They won't let you look it up on your phone while you're in the voting booth, but you can write it all down and take it with you and go to vote. Yes, that's good. That's good. That's wonderful. And I would just like to encourage the viewers too. Sometimes it's hard to get beyond personalities and and traits and things. Uh, so what you can do is look at what each candidate believes in. Look at their platform, local and statewide, government wide. Look at the platforms and vote your conscious your biblical worldview, or whichever view you have based on the platforms and what they believe in. So, and everyone get out and vote because it is important yes. and it will make a difference. Um, Donna, thank you so much. I can't believe the time has already gone so fast. <laughs> thank you so much for coming and sharing your experience with us. And thank you for going and praying at the March 2020 for our nation. And we wish you all the best and God bless you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it, Teresa. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for more great programming coming your way. Share this program with your friends and family. God bless and keep you is our prayer. Bye. Thanks for watching the Time with Teresa television show. For guest and sponsorship opportunities, contact Teresa today.